Shalom and Bruchim Avein. My name is Rabbi Yitzhak Shapira, and I would like to welcome you all over the world with the words Bruchim Avein, which literally mean in Hebrew, welcome, to a special program that we put together titled today, Shivim Panim La Torah, 70 Faces to the Torah. In this particular program, we will have a discussion slash debate with Rabbi Asher Meza and Rabbi Yechezkel Italki. Let me tell you first for a moment why we are doing this debate. We're not doing this debate, so we will argue and people will get a good laughter about seeing two, maybe even three, maybe even five opinions of Jews fighting among themselves. That's not... Uh, our purpose. Our purpose, I can speak for myself as a Messianic Jewish rabbi and also for perhaps for Rabbi Talki and I know for Rabbi Meza as well, is because we are passionate about what we believe and we see Judaism in a very different, through very different lens and based on that uh, we decided to uh, invite Rabbi Asher Meza after having some phone calls. We felt that uh, we can have a good debate that will be done in a way that is honoring, uh, honoring to Hashem. It says in Pirkei Avot, Kol machloket shi l'ashem shamayim sofali kein. Every dispute that is done for the sake of the heavenlies will endure in the end. And that's our desire today. Uh, we probably won't be able to cover all things that we want to cover, that you want to cover, but we will start and we will deal with them. But before I do that, uh, I would like to introduce, uh, we call it in a way Messianic Judaism versus Latin Judaism, but that's not what we only what we're going to be talking about. Uh, we're going to talk about Judaism at the whole. Uh, we're going to talk about the Mashiach. We're going to talk about different topics today. Uh, in this one hour debate, but uh, I'd like to first of all uh, introduce to you uh, our friends from north of the border, our Canadian friend Rabbi Yecheskel Italki, maybe give us a word about who you are and where you come from and uh, uh, a moment, just take a moment. Yes, sir. Uh, as Rabbi Shapiro mentioned, I am a Messianic Rabbi of Kehillah Melik Israel in Toronto, Ontario. We are the oldest Messianic synagogue in Canada. And I've actually have the, taken the senior position there for the past two years. I served there as an assistant rabbi to Rabbi Yaakov Farber. And um, that's what I, as I do today. And um, my family are actually Jewish descendants from Italy. My mother's from Sardinia. My father's from Naples. And um, I also serve as one of the instructors in uh, Yeshiva Shuvu, a long distance uh, Messianic Yeshiva uh, that we have here uh, based in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. And um, that's uh, that's about it. Well, just great to have you. Just such a joy to have you here with the studio. And in the other side, on the East Coast side, we have the East Coast. We have Rabbi Asher Meza. We turn to you, Asher, to give a proper introduction about yourself. Hi, hi. Um, like Rabbi Shapiro said, my name is Rabbi Asher Meza, and I'm part of an organization named Torah Judaism International. Although we are what some would call orthodox, we have a much different agenda than most other orthodox Kiruv organizations. We believe that because the instructions within what we call Torah have the power to not only better the lives of some men, but of all men, that if we took those instructions and offered them to everyone, this world could finally, finally improve. And I really look forward to sharing these ideas tonight with my brothers, Rabbi Shapira and Rabbi Ataki. And I have to tell you, I'm very excited and I'm very happy. And it's not just because it's Adar, but um, it was brought to my attention that we actually have a lot of students in common who are actually listening tonight. And I just feel blessed that God could use me like a servant, share these ideas with all believers in the God of Israel. Well, that's great, Asher, and I can say that is a, a great thing that we can do this, and that's a good testimony. So uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. And, of course, my name is Rabbi Yitzhak Shapira. I'm an Israeli 
first generation believer of, of, of Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, and uh, raised in a Sephardic home, uh, founder of Avatami Ministry, a uh, Jewish organization focused on the restoration of the Jewish people and of the entire world back to the true, authentic Jewish Messiah in his proper context. And the senior uh, Rosh Yeshiva of Yeshiva Achiv, the largest Messianic Yeshiva in the world currently. So uh, all of those guys here with me, I just want to thank you, first of all, for being here. And Asher, I, I really like the way you started this, okay, this discussion. I want to talk for a second about division, right? I, I want to start with the question, more philosophical, philosophical question mm -hmm. about division. So if I understood correctly from you, the vision of your organization is a vision of bringing Torah to the world, in essence. Is, is, that a, is that a good way to put it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, like I said earlier, that the Torah not only has the power to change Jews, it does not only benefit the world if Jews keep Torah, but if we all keep Torah, we could finally usher in this messianic age of peace that we've been so longing for. I got you. And, and so that's, I think, is a point that we definitely want to hammer for. That's, I think, one of the main points of distinctions between our organizations. The main message from your organization is, is Torah to the world, mm -hmm. as the Torah is, uh, is the vehicle. And every boy know that. That, that every Jewish boy know that the rabbi says the more mitzvot in essence you do, the closer the geulah comes, the closer the redemption comes. So that's a definitely a, a, a Jewish idea. Uh, our view, and I'll let you speak for a moment uh, uh, um, about it, Rabbi, rabbi Talki, is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I believe that the only thing that can make the world better at the end of the day the only thing that can truly rectify us from the original scene of Gan Eden is Mashiach. Mm -hmm. There is uh, several passages about this. One of the passages I can think of is, is found in the Sanhedrin. Uh, Sanhedrin 99 is an example that, that the world, in essence, all the prophets and, and even the Torah is given us so we will know the Mashiach. Mashiach is the, is the essence of all things. So I guess I, I, I want to, as a, as a philosophical question. <laughs> to be honest, it says Yemot HaMashiach. Yemot HaMashiach, right. yes, but there is but another Yemot HaMashiach is not Mashiach. Right, it says in Senate 399, Yemot HaMashiach, but right. it Yemot, actually yeah. says that the world, even the world was created mm -hmm. for Mashiach. The world itself was created for Mashiach. The question I ask for, I guess, before we get deeper into it, because we definitely have two different messages that are quite Distinct. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that the essence, the essence of all things, is Mashiach? Is no. that the end goal no. for the Mashiach? No. The end goal is peace. And just because I, in the words of Dennis Prager, I prefer clarity over agreement. This this um, quote, which I was looking into yesterday when I was looking into your website, of. Uh, Sanhedrin 99, it says that right. Rabbi Chia says right. that all the prophets prophesied only for Yemot HaMashiach. You know, so Yemot HaMashiach is Yemot the, Mashiach. Right, right. the Messianic age, this age of peace that I was initially talking to. However, the next statement, it says that Rabbi Chia says that all the prophets prophesied for Baalei Teshuvah. Yes. And then he says it again. Right. He starts over that Rabbi Hiya says, in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, that all the prophets prophesied for those who try to marry their daughters to Chachamim. So this notion that there's some sort of monolithic idea that all the prophets prophesied only from Mashiach is not in the text. Yeah, well, Mashiach, just to be clear. Now, I want to answer the question that you asked me. And the question okay, is, go ahead, go ahead. So I think everything revolves around Mashiach. Now, we both agree on the fact that the Torah, the mitzvot, is just the vehicle. We have okay. said 100% is the tools. The mitzvot are the candles. However, the ultimate goal for me is the ultimate goal that appears in the Torah, which is peace. Something this world has never seen. The age of peace, where the prophets 
themselves say that it's a time where one man will not have to tell his brother, no, Lord, for they will all know us from the least of us to the greatness, and the knowledge of the Lord will cover the world like the water covers the sea. This is peace. This is not a man. This is an age that will only come about by us keeping its fault. I want a couple of stuff. At, no, in a, in a way, what, what, what Rabbi Mays is saying when he refers to, the, to Isaiah chapter 11, that the Messianic era, I mean, because this is one of the things that uh, anti-missionaries will argue, that if Yeshua was Mashiach, if we look outside our window today, we don't really see a utopian society. But the only notion of disagreement I have with the anti-missionary and to come back to Rabbi Meza, is that if you take a look at some of, of Judaism's great rabbis, for instance, the Gra, right, the Vilna Gaon, he, his understanding of Mashiach, and of course, this is, I guess this is the separation, because there's not a definitive understanding here of Mashiach in the Jewish world. Well, we accept Yeshua as the Mashiach, and others may accept the difference of Mashiach. The Gra, for an example, if he took a look at the passages, which he did of Isaiah 11, he says that this utopian perfection is Mashiach ben David. Right. But it's not Mashiach bin David in the sense of a human being. It refers to the rectification Mashiach does as Ben Yosef, yeah. under the age of affliction and suffering, and he rectifies the world in a spiritual way, behind the scenes. And Aram Kahl brings this down. But then again, we would have to be sensitive to the fact, are we, how are we interpreting these passages based on Peshat, Drash, etc.? So that has to begin. But why I mention this is, once we explore the text, you see, we have to be sensitive to how we approach them in proper context. So yeah. that's what I do. But what I want to come back to Asher's point is Asher finds that this peace is in the Torah. And I believe we all agree here we have a, a love for the Torah, right? We, not only we have the, uh, the, the love for the Torah, I would even take it uh, further. The Torah is the perfect model. Right. It, it's absolutely the perfect. Nobody will deny that. So here's the thing. Could we agree here that the Torah in itself even though the mitzvot are the vehicle, can we say that the Torah can actually bring about a full tikkun in this world? Do we think so? Do we think that the Torah is actually the blueprint for the utopian well, peace? Well, I, I would say... The keeping of the Torah. The keeping well, of the, I, I, the Torah. Okay, okay. 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 so, so, so a couple of things. Let, let me say one, two things that, uh, about this, because I think you're on the right track here with this discussion. First of all, the Torah itself says... That peace, if, if peace is the ultimate goal, which the Torah speak quite a lot of that, Isaiah chapter 2 as an example, Isaiah 11, Isaiah 9, the one who brings the peace to the world, it doesn't say, according to the Pshat, will be our mitzvot, it will be the prince of peace. That's well, what whether, says. Oh, oh, the that, prophets, not just oh, 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 hold on, yeah. and we're going to get to that in a minute. Okay, all right. But I'm taking Jesus Isaiah, okay. I, 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 I'm taking Isaiah, just, this, is, this is Judaism. And one on one, and I think, hold on, Master, just one second. Sure. Rambam says in his per principle, if you agree, Rambam actually wrote mm -hmm. the principle, he says, Ani ma'amin be'munash milma, she called the Vrei Nevi'im emet ham. Okay. Okay, so if the Nevi'im of Israel are a truth speaker, and I do believe, I take it in a verse uh, base value, I believe that the one <clears throat> who brings the peace to the world, who to call the Prince of Peace, and it's not me here. You're not arguing with me. I'm, this is Judaism says the Prince of Peace will be the Mashiach. It's not going to be the mitzvahs that will do that. It's going to be truly Messiah who will bring this peace to the world. That's point number one. And, and point number two, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think that's even the bigger, the more serious point, is this. Look, Moshe Rabbeinu, may his memory be blessed, had a shlichut, right? Mm -hmm. He came to bring rectification not only to the Jewish people, but to all humanity, okay? Moshe, not just Moshe, the children of Israel had failed, okay? With the first Luchot, we know that. We know that they failed. So anything that came after this, the, recti this, the second rectification, is not resembling even the uh, first, first Luchot. And Chazal said, and, and I'll just quote one or two things here, they said that if Moses indeed was successful, if Moshe Rabbeinu was successful, we wouldn't receive any other book except the book of, mm -hmm. of the Torah, and Joshua, there wouldn't be a need for the Nevi'im because it would have been success. So we would be successful. So you're telling me mm -hmm. that in essence, 
we were successful in getting to where we needed to get, although Chazal said, and all the prophets of Israel said, indeed the opposite. They said, no, you failed. That was the, the mm-hmm. shortcoming. So uh, those are very two important points. So let you, let you respond to that. Okay. Answer. I'm going to respond in order. First, you misquote the sixth principle of the Yud Gimel Karamuna regarding prophecy, when the principle just states that one must believe that prophecy exists, not that the prophets that we have today, that we in some way interpret their text 100% error-free. And then you completely miss his ninth principle, which states what? which states that there shall be no changes to the Torah, but for some reason you're quoting the prophets and calling it... I don't believe I quoted that at all. No, no, no. I'm telling you that there could be no additions or changes to the Torah, and that's his ninth principle, and you're quoting prophets outside of Torah. Everything you said regarding your vision of some messianic paradise... That vision does not exist in the words of the Torah in the way you explained it. And also, if we're going to use the Rambam, I mean... If we're going to quote the 13 principles of the Rambam, the third principle of the Rambam, yep. which he claims that one... If, Shen Mesite Guf. Shen Mesite Guf. Right. But we're not talking about the... Somebody believes that God is corporeal in any way. That's right. But we're not talking about number three. But I'm just quoting the Rambam, saying that this justifies my statement, this justifies that... Okay, really. oh, oh, okay Asher, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Asher, Asher, let me ask you. A question. First of all, I flat out disagree with what you say of the sixth principle or the ninth, which I didn't actually quote. Let me ask you a question. What's make a prophet a true prophet of Israel? The Rambam explains. No, not the Rambam. No, no, don't say the Rambam. Explains. All right. I want to ask you, what does it mean for a prophet to speak a true prophecy? What, what does that mean? I don't want to give you my interpretation. I'm telling you what the halakha is. Every prophet was to be tested by the Beit Din Hagadol to see if he was a true prophet. People didn't just show up, do a miracle and be accepted as a prophet. Chazal told us not to trust miracles. All right, I just said that. Yeah, that's what, that's yeah. what you're saying. You're just right. saying according to the halakha is okay. that there's a protocol to follow in order to determine whether or not a Navi was a Navi or whether or not he's a Navi Shekhar. So okay. we agree, we agree. I believe in Judaism believes in the prophets canonized in what Christians call the Old Testament, what Jews call the Tanakh. There's no disagreement there. I mean, is that what your question is referring to? No, no. That's, that's not what I was saying. Look, in Judaism, we are truly, truly blessed to have prophets. I mean, I just have to make this clear, and I want to really solidify this point, that, like you said, whether we have in the 13 principles of the Rambam, that Hashem will send us prophets to act as human compasses to what? To guide us back to Torah. That is the purpose of prophecy. So when someone quotes anything that the prophets say, it must be in line with what appears in the Torah. If it's not, then we're understanding it incorrectly. Look, look, this is what Re- Re- Rabbi Kaplan, who is the, one of the highest authorities, not in my says, opinion. Sa- not says, not sa- in opinion. says on, on a prophet. He says this. Let me just give you... Give you his interpretation of Navi Emet. Mm-hmm. He said the prediction of a true prophet, however, of a true Navi Emet, all have come true. As we found the words, no word of God shall fall to the ground. God like was told the Nevi'im, Yariel 22, 28, mm-hmm. let thy prophet who has a dream tell that dream, and let he who has word speak the truth. For how does straw compare to wheat? The mm-hmm. prediction of fortune tellers and mediums mm-hmm. are like straw, which may have a little wheat mixed with it. But God's word is like pure mm-hmm. wheat containing no straw at all. If Yeshayahu Anavi told me that the peace will come to the world, the prince of peace, mm-hmm. okay, the prince of peace, I am going to take the word of, 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 of Yeshayahu uh, Literally, not like Rambam said in Iger Teman, as an example, he said that he called Aviad El Gibor because Isaiah exaggerated. Literally, that not was... Not exaggerated. El means a powerful one. With the no, but, that don't but if you, if you read Iger Teman, uh-huh. he said that there is a method of exaggeration in the words of Yeshayahu. I don't know those matter of that. exaggeration in all the Nevi'im. The Nevi'im dealt in what's called hyperbole. It's a poetic language. Here, first of all, we have to make a distinction between prophecy and everything that appears in the books of the prophet. Because I think we're playing with semantics here. 
You're saying prophecy, but what you're really meaning is the book of Isaiah, the book of Jeremiah. No, no, no. In other words, no, I was actually re no. alluding, no. Asher, I was alluding to your point In other words, about, about I, I just, just to bring the, our audience for just one moment, I'll let you finish, but our audience back to the context of this discussion. Mm -hmm. um, the context here, you claim that Shalom is going to come to the world through observance of Torah. Teshuvah, and that's true. Ultimately. Well, well, you, you say sh Shalom and Teshuvah and so forth. Mm -hmm. Shuvah is important part of, 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 um, Teshuvah is very important part, but we know. So according, according to, to the Torah, it's a small part, by the way. But, but, but the Nevi'im of Israel tell us that actually the Mashiach will come in the darkest of time, not when the people will do Teshuvah. He will come actually in the darkest of absolute dark of time, not just of the nations, of Israel. The Nevi'im tell us that, et cetera, et cetera. Different opinions on so we're going in the wrong way. To get back to what I was saying before, not everything in what we call the books of the prophets is or was meant to be considered prophecy. First, you have to understand that fact. Actually, every prophecy in the books of the prophets, they have three parts to them. The first part is a historical context. The prophet was directing his statements, first and foremost, to the people of his time. Obviously, it was to the people of his time because this is who Hashem sent him to. This is unavoidable. So the only way someone could have extended, let's say, that prophecy that was being directed to those people was by attaching another occurrence of that same prophecy for some future events. If you believe, let's say, example, if you believe that in Isaiah chapter 7, they're speaking about some virgin birth. Yeah, we're not talking about the virgin birth. Yeah, right now. Example, example. Example. example, this virgin, let's say it was Miriam, especially by the statement, there that seems to be in the present and not in the future sense, there would have to be two virgin births, or at least two of every supposed prophecy that people claim, let's say, is speaking about Yeshua in history. Or the initial audience listening to these statements, who it was sent to them, would have taken it as some sort of stumbling block by the Almighty. But, but I don't have an issue with this. I tell you why not, Asher, because even Chazal says some of the Nevuot, they call them Ketzarat Shvach and Awukat Tvach. Prophecy can be for the people who live in the time, and it can be for a long term. Okay, let's look exactly at the first thing. Saying. And regarding the statements that you're saying about Yom HaMashiach, what we call the Messianic Age, although they may be seen in some sort of dream or vision, this is not necessarily considered prophecy in okay. itself, right? Okay, but, Do you but, agree? but I, have no pro I have no problem with that, because obviously Isaiah lived in a time that he spoke to the people in his, mm -hmm. in his generation. So, for no, example, the visions about Yemot HaMashiach, is that considered prophecy? When we talk about Yemot HaMashiach, there is always a messianic connection. Let me give you an example. What do I mean by that? Isaiah chapter 9. I'm not denying for this fact. Follow what I'm saying for a moment, because we're, we're in a very specific pattern. I would like to get the point across at least. Yeshaya chapter 9, when, when it says that this child will be... Uh, given unto us, and the name will be Peleo, Etzel, Giboav, Etzel, Shalom. Hey, listen, I'm not the one who said that it's a messianic, mess, speaking of the Mashiach. It's, it's the ones that you claim as an orthodox rabbi to represent who said, hey, this speak not on Hezekiah, mm -hmm. but this speak on the Mashiach. For example, in Masechet Zota, Perek Shalom, they say, Mashiach will be called Shalom. It sounds like you're deviating from Yom to Mashiach. Stay no, 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 it, on no, track he's here. not saying that it's okay. Yom to Mashiach. He said, no, no. it's literally... We were talking about Yom to Mashiach right now. Only Yom to Mashiach. No, no, we're not talking about Yom to Mashiach here. Because there is a specific entity, right? We have to look at the pshat of the text. It's not talking about Yom to Mashiach. It's talking about a entity. And we can look at the Hebrew to see that he's talking about a specific one that will be given unto us. And yeah, you're focusing on Isaiah chapter 9. Well, we're, talking well, about Isaiah. we're talking about prophecy, that we're establishing this foundation of what prophecy is, what's considered prophecy, and what's not considered prophecy. I am not saying, so, so let's be clear on that. I am not saying that everything in the book of Isaiah mm -hmm. is prophecy, okay? okay? That's obvious. Not everything okay. from Isaiah, Isaiah 1 to Isaiah 66 mm -hmm. is prophecy. We understand that. But he is a Navi. Talking about and, Yom is not considered prophecy. But I think you're, get, you're getting on a tangent here. Mm -hmm. you're, you're getting on a tangent of the word Yom and I'm trying to get you. Listen, what is the... What's the job? Let me say one second. I want to inject here. Yeah. Yeah. I see what's the goal of, the of a Navi? A Navi come 
to give some word to Am Israel, okay? To call Israel about the Geula or about other things, etc., etc. If you read chapter 1, just in context of Isaiah 1, all the way, let's say, to Isaiah 11, okay? You will notice something here that he's talking to the people of Yehuda during this time and portion of this, Isaiah 1 is an example, but he's talking in Isaiah chapter 2 as an example, Isaiah chapter 9, Isaiah chapter 11. He's talking to them about about the, uh, not just the Yemota Mashiach, as you said, as an example, right? He's talking about Yemota Mashiach in some cases, but as an example, just, just one very, very, very quick example, Yeshayahu, Yeshayahu, Isaiah, chapter 11, who is the hotel? Well, that's my point. That's what I was saying. It's not Yemota Mashiach, it's Yemota Mashiach. No, my point is what I was trying to this. I agree that the notion of the Messiah does appear in the prophets, but you're saying that's the ultimate goal, and I'm saying the ultimate goal is peace, and the Messiah comes after we achieve peace, but the Messiah does not bring peace. Because must, oh, oh, okay. Now, wait. Now, oh, no, no, Asher, well, what you're saying mm -hmm. is a good point, and what Saki's saying, I understand, and I'm, what I'm trying, I guess, here in the middle here, to, to bring clarity between both, I see that you're focused even on what it says in Masechah Sanhedrin. Yomoh HaMashiach is the concept of an age right. that represents a state of existence that humanity is in mm -hmm. that's the achievement. Now, what Saki's point is, as he bases the Pasuk here back in, 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 uh, in, uh, in the first Pasuk here of Yeshiyahu 11, he's focused on this, speaking of an individual. That's right. And then as we read in context, it then talks about an age. Right. Of messianic peace, where the knowledge like of the Shem covers the yeah. earth like the oceans cover the water. So, in other words, he's looking at the just position, and obviously, there's a cause and effect that in order for the world to have your Moham Mashiach, it starts with some individual exactly. that identifies as the Mashiach. How, in, in your in your perspective, do you agree with that? Do you agree with the context no, no. of flow with the past? No, I do not. Okay. Well, I'll tell you why. Okay. Because the Torah gives a different pattern, completely different pattern. It clearly states that first comes Teshuvah, then comes the Geula, and then one of the first mitzvot we have when entering the land is to declare a king for us when we're ready. So that's the pattern the Torah gives, and that's how we have to read the prophets. Just like we know there's certain areas in Torah Shabbat that are not in chronological order, a principle that has been solidified to us, especially in last week's Parsha. Also, the wording of the prophets, how you guys are choosing to understand it, is not only not in chronological order, it's going against what the Torah says. It's Teshuvah. Teshuvah is, what is going to bring this age of peace, not us choosing this Messiah, we got, we got, we got, we got the point. We got the no, point. no, and I no. no disagree with there. I don't I, think I, the point by okay. choosing a celestial bailout instead of a Messiah that comes as a consequence of our teshuvah. You're making the text unethical because you're saying that the Torah was given for absolutely no reason because the Messiah is some in some way going to just appear and save us when we had the tools to save ourselves and we failed to use them. And those tools are Torah. Okay, a good point. That's a good point, and that's where I want to get back in context. Now, I just want to I just want to jump off of you about the the parsha there in Nitzavim. His Nachmanides comes along, and he explains that the concept of Hashem, after the curses and the blessings, mm -hmm. which the Jewish people experience them, they can only have their the chenda removed from their heart to end the gullus of Adon through Mashiach, and I, that's Nachmanides, whether you disagree with him or not. I'm quoting the Torah. Nachmanides. Okay. Yeah, oh, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, let me, let me finish. Uh, no, uh, so I'm uh, saying, Nachmanides, on that, on that Pasuk there, in it's Avim, when it talks about circumcising the heart of you and your children from the Gullus, he says, right. this is through Mashiach, this happens. Okay. So even though it's Shuba, what, right? Rabbis, well, it seems like you're more of a rabbinic Jew than I am, because we have a principle, even in rabbinic Judaism, that says, Ein mikor yotzein mide pashuto, that... A version of Torah does not depart from his literal understanding. So I understand that the Ramban holds this way, while the Rambam, Maimonides, completely disagrees with the Ramban on anything regarding Mashiach and Yemen to Mashiach. So you quoting the Ramban does not make it any more truer than me quoting Ibn Ezra. The okay, so who, who gives whose opinion the authoritative that's, view then? Yeah, that, the Torah that's, is the authority. If you can't I know Torah is the authority, but... Well, well, you say you say Torah is the, is the authority, and you know. But I want to come back to this point, then Saki and, and, and uh, right. Rabbi Meza. Okay, you. As the point is, you say the Torah is the tool for shuva. There's no denying of it because if we read in context there, Moshe, uh, as Moshe said, the Torah is low v'shemayim, right? It's not in heaven; it's here with us, and that's fine. But let me ask you this: If 
if the Torah, was the Torah the immediate, is the Torah, is the Torah the goal? Was the Torah the goal for the Jewish people when they did Yitzhak Mitzrayim? Was it the goal? No, it wasn't the goal. So why is it the goal so now? Why, is it the, goal why, why now? is it the goal now? No, it's the vehicle, like you said earlier. It's the vehicle to get us where we want to go, and that's that age of peace. That may not last forever. I mean, we may fall from these heights here's of sin. The problem. Huh? There's an issue with it. You want to so here's, here's, here's the issue. This is it. Here's the issue. When the Torah was first given, we had no curses in it. None. No Torah, no curses were added into it from Parshas Yisro all the way to Mishpatim. We had no curses. This week's Parsha Kisasa, we see that after Hashem actually renewed the covenant in a way. There's one Torah, by the way. Hold on, hold on, yeah, there hold is hold one on. Torah. It's okay. one covenant. One covenant. One the, covenant. Torah, the Torah is like a ketubah. So you but, exclude the Tochacha. Yeah, the Tochacha back in Bahar, Bahukatai. Israel violated Hashem, then added the curses to it. Okay, these curses basically are in a negative. How, how can we invite a non-Jew in to the covenant that has a curse? You, and that's, that's, the, issue. My, that, that's, that's the issue. It's a conditional that's, curse. Just like the promises are conditional, the curses are also conditional. You're talking so, 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 so why is it that even in Shmona Yisrael, Shmona Yisrael, I'm talking about the prayer that every Jew pray. We're every talking day. Torah, you're bringing the rabbis. Let's think, no, no. shout to the Torah. Look, Tfilat Shmonasa, you you are saying you're an Orthodox Jew. You should know that. You yourself, actually, I saw you say it in one of your videos, something that I agree with. Look, are we in exile today, in a spiritual exile? Are we in a spiritual exile? Are we as Jews in a spiritual exile today? I don't even know what that word spiritual means. I mean, in biblical Hebrew, there's no word for spiritual. We are in a physical exile, and that's what the... No, no, uh, you, can live, you, can live in, you can live in Eretz Israel, okay? Mm -hmm. You can live in Eretz Israel, and every sure, Jew we should know... For sure we're in Galut. We are, we are in Galut. Tell me, Galut. Galut. This is people who Shomrei Torah, Shomrei Mitzvot. Why do we pray every, every day? Especially, I, I, you know, I was in Israel during the... Uh, uh, Every day we pray. Let me read it to you. It says, The deficit of his saron. Here, I'll read it to you in English so everybody can understand. It says, When a Jew feels. Yeah, this, this is actually from the setter for. Um, for the slichot, okay? Mm -hmm. And it says this When a Jew feels a certain void and when he calculates that he's not worthy. There is a commandment from in the Torah to ask Hashem to fulfill his void. What is the greatest void of a Jew? He is in exile and double darkness. Mashiach Tzitkenu has not come. It is the rabbis themselves who says that the only one who can fulfill the void, the only one mm -hmm. who can do those things, is the Mashiach. It's not our tshuva. Let me respond by to the this. Way, by the way, okay. it's not our korbanot, because we have no bet mikdash, okay? It's definitely... It's the tshuva. According to it is not the tshuva. It's Mashiach. The Torah says it. The Torah says it. I mean, forget what Slichot says. First of all, let's take a step back and just breathe for a second. And I love your passion, and I love your students. Okay, and we both love Torah. Okay. I had the schut to live in Eretz Israel for five years. And one thing I realized when living in the land is that about 90% of the Jews who live in that land do not keep Torah. So this idea was that we're in Eretz Israel, and why has the Mashiach come? The reason Mashiach hasn't come, well, the reason the Geulah hasn't come is because, like I said, we're failing to keep Torah, so we're praying. Slichot, we're praying daily. Whoa, whoa, I, I got you. I got you. All this because we want Israel to repent, but that is a physical repentance. It's not some sort of celestial bailout that God is some way going to save us in the third inning. No, no, he gave us the tools. And whether it takes us 6,000 years, 50,000 years, till we finally begin to use these tools, the Torah, to better this world, this world will not see peace nor the Messiah. So, Asher, Asher, I want to ask you a question. You believe that we have today, and that's to me the most disturbing thing from all of these things, you believe that we have today uh, uh, authentic Torah in our hands. We have the tools to 
uh, to keep Torah, yet Chazal himself, and I'm saying in one verse says this, it's, it's one of the places you find it in the Talmud, another place Kohelet Rabbah is an example there. A Torah she'anu lemedim ayom nikret hevel leumat Torah to Mashiach, which literally means the Torah that we study today will be called vanity and foolishness in comparison to the Torah of Mashiach. And let me quote you even from <laughs> the Navi, the Navi again, from Yeshayahu, let's go for just real quick. Mm -hmm. This is not just a rabbi. Our prophets are telling us this. Yeshayahu chapter 51, 51. You see, you're saying what we have today is authentic and true. And I say, somebody who was raised in Judaism, that's nonsense. That's not true. Look what it says here. It says in Yeshayahu Nun Aleph, 51, mm -hmm. 4, it says, Akshivu Eli Ami. The word Akshava for those who don't mm -hmm. in Hebrew mean to listen with attentive here. Mm -hmm. Uleumi. This is talking to his people. Okay. Uleumi Eli Ezinu. He mm -hmm. Torah Miiti Titse. U Mishpati Leor Amim Argia. Who is he talking about here when he said, Listen to my people, I will bring you from me a new Torah. What the sages said about this? They say that yeah. will be the new Torah. I cannot that, believe that, my that ears. Mashiach, that Mashiach I'll tell you, I cannot believe my ears. First of all, I've given you and your listeners the benefit of the doubt. I made a whole video saying that Messianic Jews are not heretics because they keep the Torah of Moshe. So you're saying that the Torah we keep today, or we have today, is not the Torah of Moshe, because it's not the real Torah, it's vanity? I mean, do you have a spot to say that? That the Torah we have, the Humash, is not the real Torah? But that the Torah of Mashiach, again, this is a new religion. You're deviating from the path. No, 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 no. no What's no, the word no. Chadash mean? No. Chadash. Every rabbi, and I'm surprised actually is a rabbi, you don't know this, that every rabbi in the world brings a chidush to the Torah. What's the word Chadash mean? What is a chidush? What? It's a new idea, but it's not oh, a oh, so, so, He would so never me, say. Did, but did, the Ramba, did the Rambam brought Torah Chadasha? Of course he does. He, br he brings Hidushin to the Torah on a variety of things. We can't add to the Torah. We have an Avera. Is, is, is that why? He's not adding to the Torah. And he would never go as far as to say that the Torah we keep today in some way is different than the Torah they get back. Of course it is. The, the Prophet tell us that. The Prophet so, okay, so here's the thing. Asher, uh, based upon this classic Yeshiyahu. What's the Torah of Mashiach? Let, let, let's get back to the... Well, let's, let, let's get back of Mashiach, Torah literally means instructions. Are you saying that the instructions that appear in the New Testament that differ with Tanakh, no, no, no. these instructions no. that were given by your Mashiach, no, the no, instructions? No, no, that no, no, no. Let's completely Protestantism. Um, you're calling yourself Messianic, but you just revealed yourself to be a Lutheran, a Methodist. I mean, this is not, not, a, not at all. No, no. Let me let me get okay, okay. Let me let me get say Let me let me get Not at all. <laughs> okay, first, we don't agree anything with Lutheranism, Calvinism, or any of the other trio. <laughs> thank God. Thank God. Okay, we know. Like, okay, for the concept here, Chidush, the the. Even Yeshua's teaching there in the Sermon of the Mount, Matthew 5 through chapter 7, as he's saying, you heard it was said, you heard it said. Here he goes and he gives insight to what the mitzvot mean, giving a chidush, he's giving a refreshing, and give a uh, you know, if you will, understanding to the root of what that mitzvah means, whether it's adultery, etc. We wouldn't, chas shalom, say he's just creating a brand new Torah, no, but no, instead he's no. renewing and giving fresh insight to the actual meaning of the Torah. Well, well, to yeah, 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 but I would say, I would I say, mean, you quoted it, saying that the Torah we keep today is in some way not the authentic Torah. The, I, I, the Torah I, I, I would I, say I, if we treat the Torah as something old, our insights are old, the, the way we approach the mitzvot is old. That's what Yeshua does in the in the Mount. He well, gets I say that. So the Torah doesn't change. If the Torah doesn't change, we don't need a Torah of Mashiach. No, the, no, Mashiach no, 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 is the one, the Mashiach is the one to give us the enhanced understanding of how we should properly observe the Torah. Look, 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 let, 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 you go, let, let me go on somebody. You probably you're, 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 you're rewarded for keeping the Torah. If, like, we've been keeping the Torah wrong all along. Well, for instance, we got a Torah full of curses. Okay, okay, let me, never, let, never let, let, curses. let me, Curse. hold on a second. No. Hold on, I, I think I can rectify this very clearly. So let me do this. Let me give you two things. We all can agree that Rashi is one of the highest authority on the Pshat. The Pshat Here is yeah. what, what I Rashi I agree with that. Okay, but go ahead. Okay, you don't agree, agree with that, but all of Judaism will agree well, with that. Actually, okay. Actually, okay. So, so, says that Rashi teaches a Pshat does not 
understand Rashi and has fallen into the trap that Rashi mentions in um, Baris the Paragimel, that where he says that I came to only bring the Pashat, but then he says, La Agada, also the Agadot. You know, so when you completely... Well, we'll get, we'll, 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 we'll get. clearly says that Rashi failed in his first part of that uh, Pasuk because he said that he came to finish Rashi's work. Anyone who says that Rashi teaches a Pashat does not know the Meforshim. Okay, okay, that's first of all. The Ramban does bring the Pashat, but not Rashi. The Ramban? Of course. The Ramban, the Ramban uses Ramban or Ramban? No. The Ramban uses more of the Pashat than Rashi does. If you want a straight Pashat... Yeah, yeah, he's right. No, he's right about yeah, that. Yeah, but the, the Ramban, Ramban also used the full part S at the same time. Yeah, but he's saying in context, though, that uh, if we're going to argue Pashuto, that Ramban, no, Ramban no, does... Ramban look, does. Look. mentioned the word Pardes. The word Pardes was invented in the 13th century in terms of him, in terms of an acronym. It appears in the Gemara, but not as a system of, of explaining Tish... No, explain Asher, Asher, Asher let, me, let me answer your question, because Asher, you jumped so off your, the way. Jump, you jump to a full conclusion. Let me let me give you a couple of things. I think you said the Ramban used Pardes, and the notion of Pardes as a style of interpreting scripture did not exist before the Zohar. As a matter of fact, it appears in what's called Tikkun Zohar, 15th, 17th century. We're not even the original Zohar of the 13th century. Well, well, we know that Gematria is already mentioned in Pirkei Avot, chapter Gimel, verse 23. That is not true. We know that things such as gematria mentioned in the Mishnah. I think, no. he, I think what Asher is trying to say is that the, the use of the part is as, as, a, as a systematic okay, was not introduced until... Uh, but but the idea of using the remes to using gematria... But I, not to establish doctrine. Not so Paul gave the 13 principles of exegesis, and all those are based on the Peshat. Now, we believe in Peshat and Drash. The issue we have in... My neck of the woods is with Remez and Sod to, in some way, explain what's in the Torah. This is something new. Oh, we have to start with the Pshat. We all agree on this. But look, let, let, me, let me give you, I want to get back to the issue we're talking about here, because I think we drifted just a little bit. It, Rashi says this. He said, kiss me with kisses, to, to answer your question. He says on the verse in uh, uh, Shira Shirim, kiss me with kisses from his lips. Speaks of the Mashiach, Mashiach who will explain the secrets of Torah and its proper meaning. Okay, Likotei Torah says... Does that sound like Peshat to you? Oh, oh, hold on, Just hold answer on. that question. Does that sound oh. like Peshat to you? That, he, he, he gives us a sort of a gradual understanding of the verse. Uh, hold, on. Uh, hold on, Asher, Asher, Asher. You don't have to let me please finish my talk. Okay? Okay. Likutei Torah says, the Mashiach will reveal the true flavor of the internal Torah instead of the external Torah. What does it mean? Pnimiyut Torah. In Torah Tahor it says, the long exile is so that we may receive the True and internal meaning of the Torah in the future, the Mashiach will reveal the internal meaning, meaning of the Torah. What does it mean? Does it mean that, that the Torah that we, mm -hmm. we, we have today is not valuable? Here is what a Posek, one of the great Poseks in Israel says. He says this. He asked the exact same question. So I want to clarify it so nobody jumped the gun here. I said, what value? There isn't the Torah that we study today, since it's considered foolishness. Does it reduce its importance? This is not the case, okay? Our centuries explain to us that as we resemble a baby who studies the Torah in the womb of the mother, and when he is born, he forgets to do the Torah, as it says in Nida 30b. Well, hold on, let me finish. Let, 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 let me finish and I'll... Asher, 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 let me finish. Let me finish and I'll, I'll give you a chance to respond. What is the value of the first Torah? If it is, what is the value of the first Torah? There is still great value in the first Torah, okay? When we identify the new Torah, it won't mm -hmm. be new in our eyes as we will remember our mother, mother's word and he and the words of, uh, will integrate to our world as we have heard before. Our responsibility in the world is to prepare to the world to come. Please understand, mm -hmm. I don't hold an anti-Torah view and neither, neither Rabbi Talki, you missed the point. You have anything quoted for once. You, 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 you missed the point altogether. One time, you failed to quote Torah once. You quoted, you quoted Lekute Torah, the first, the Babar Cherevi, Lekute Maran, all these sources from the 17th century from Sidut that have nothing to do with Torah. So you're saying that Agadot, first of all, let me calm down. Okay. 
This is Kissinger. Are you accepting this agada, this legend, and not any other that contradicts it? Because the reason I say this is because this is not agada. This is a parka. In here, and then say that Judaism teaches and Hazal say. So, are you accepting this agada that com confirms what you're saying? Let 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 let, let me ask, let me ask you a question. I, I will ask you a question. Okay, let me answer. One rabbi, you know, one rabbi, Asher. That's where you're wrong. Let, 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 let him finish his thought. Go ahead, Asher. Hasidut, midrashim, agarata. That's a C. You understand? I mean, if you want to see every statement that appears in these works, it would be equivalent to 8,000 Tanakhs. I'm actually surprised we can't even bring more sources because according to all... Well, I can. Oh, we, we're just beginning. Uh, we, we're just beginning. But here's a, this is the thing that we have to recognize. As we begin, we begin the text off here. And then say, Torah says, and we speak for Torah. You failed to mention Torah once. I've based my whole... No, no, no. Okay. You, you, you missed the point. So here, here's the next... Wait, 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 wait. It's, it's, it's consider Isaiah... Uh, not the Torah, and that's the part of the issue. Where, 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 are, where are points started? It started... Okay, let, let me ask. Okay, so, sure. so, so Asher, mm. you're, okay, for one, he figured, he feels that even though Yeshayahu brings the concept down about your Moham Mashiach, or even we, uh, most Mepharshim agree that Yeshayahu is talking about the Mashiach in the beginning of Yeshayahu 11.1, 1, his viewpoint is that nothing can go beyond the framework of what the Torah lays down, and the Not Torah most. lays down first oh, as Shuva. Shuva yeah. first, and then the anointing of a Melech afterwards. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Let me, I'm, I'm going to get Okay, that's, I, I, that's I, I, what I was saying. we got to keep the frame in context here. So, in other words, mm -hmm. sure. so since you bring these passages there, his argument back is yeah. that you're bringing in Midrashim, Agada, and Agada okay, Sahalaka. Okay, so, so let's get back to the point. I, I mean, I wish... Uh, hold, hold on, for me, though, you missed the point and you did not address it. Mm -hmm. Chazal said that we received everything past the book of Joshua. Wait, wait. What, what Chazal or Adat Yahid, you know, some long, no, one statement here, no, that is respond no to this. I don't have to respond to every single statement. You know, no, that is, statement this, that this is not that you say. As a matter of fact, the Rambam contradicts everything you're saying in his no, 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 no. So, uh, actually, actually, to the Rambam, or do you want to stick to Torah Shabbat uh, which we both accept like an authority? No. This one in Judaism walks around thinking that you have to accept Every midrash. As a matter of fact, it says that if you accept midrashim and agadot, as literally it says that you're a fool. Okay. I, okay. The Torah is the basis. It says that you believe you have venerated the rabbis. You have made them above no. Torah has for shalom. I'm telling you, let's stick to the Torah and understand the prophets and Chazal according to the Torah. Go ahead. Look. So we looked at so far at three examples. We look at Yeshayahu nine, Yeshayahu, Yeshayahu eleven. I quoted to you Isaiah fifty one, that said that literally. But we never began analyzing. Look, 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 I'm not so scared. So and analyzing text. I believe in Shiach. Okay. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One second, one second. One couple of things. Let, let me let me take a step back. Torah Chadasha. Let's get back to the context here of Torah Chadasha. The Torah. You believe? I think the root issue, one of the root issues that we have, uh, um, Asher, that you don't believe that the words of the Nevi'im is, in essence, word of halacha in any way, shape, or form. Is that, is that the first statement? I mean, I don't really think you know what halacha means if you're going to include the word halacha. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to use the word halacha. You do not put anything that the prophets of Israel said on specially, and let's not play semantic on the word of Mashiach, or on the base of Mashiach, in Mashiach, on Mashiach, on the portrait of Mashiach, in in in... in in the level of Torah. Is that correct? I didn't really understand the question, but if you're telling me that there's some sort of monolithic understanding regarding Mashiach and I'm failing to miss it, then you have to explain further. Because I'll tell you, you do. even the prophets, huh? You miss the prophets. He says he believes in the Nevi'im. Of course. You believe in the prophets? Of course I believe in the prophets, but I don't believe in it from a Christian perspective that puts Sefer Yeshayahu on the level of Bamid Bar or Bereshit. There's a big distinction there. Everything has to be justified with Torah, which is what you're failing to do. And no, nobody. Okay, so here's the thing. Here, here's, here's, here's a question I have. No, we fully agree. There is no disagreement on that. Never even get to be cannot exist without Torah. We all we agree understand that. that. It cannot exist. Torah is what Moshe brought mitzvot. The the Nevi'im. Yeah, they had insight to the word. 
But let me ask you, would you agree that the Nevi'im, as it brings down in, in Perkei vote in the Mishnah, that they were the continuation of the Kisei Moshe? In other words, they had the authority and interpretation to Torah Shabbat Pei. Would you agree to that? That's not what it says in Perkei Avot. I'll tell you exactly what it says. In Perkei Avot, it brings down the transmission of Torah Shabbat Pei. And it states that the prophets themselves sat on the Beit Din Hagadol. Yeah. However, their powers of prophecy were not needed at this time because, like the Rambam brings down in Chilchot uh, Sanhedrin, that the Sanhedrin only decided issues by vote. Okay, the prophets were also Chachamim. It had nothing to do with dreams and visions here. Okay, so that's what's being brought down in Prokhov. Not that the books of the prophets decide how we do things, but it was transmitted. The these were the prophets, Malachi, Ezra, Yeshayahu, they were part of what we call Chazal, but not the books of the prophets. The books of the prophets are only there to give us a historical narrative of the lives and the sayings of the prophets, but only to bring us back to Torah, not to build a new religion on the words of the prophets, which that's what it sounds that you guys are doing. And I'm really trying to keep you... In the Jewish world here, considering you not heretical, but saying no. there's some sort of new Torah, that the prophets override the Torah, this is problematic. In other words, uh, here's the thing. This is what I'm getting at, okay? My point is that you agree then that the Nevi'im, to a degree, they had authority involved in Torah Shabbat Bay to interpret the Torah. In other words, in Nehemiah 839, mm -hmm. we back up, back up a couple of pasukim there to get yeah. a context we see that once Israel's coming back from the Gullis, the Chemia brings down, basically it brings down the creed, no buying and selling on Shabbos, which we don't find anywhere at all in Torah Shabbat Tav. For the Torah Shabbat Pei we do. In Torah about Shabbat Pei we do, right? So, <laughs> in other words, how, how does Torah Shabbat Pei agree? Whether it's voting on, but I, ultimately Torah Shabbat Pei is brought through, a con in a way, Ruach HaKodesh, through divine insight through God's Spirit to be able to interpret Torah Shebek Tav, mm -hmm. because ultimately everything has to come through God's Spirit to, to recognize the interpretation. No, no, absolutely not. But Chazal used the 13 principles of exegesis, and when I say Chazal, I include the prophets here. So the prophets, in terms of how it appears in the first Mishnah of Perk Avot, is just saying that these prophets also had a hand in voting into what's Halakha and what's Hashkafa, and on and on. But to say that the words that appear in the Nevi'im today were used by the rabbis to in some way establish halakha, that appears nowhere in Torah Shabbat Pei or in Torah Shabbat Tav. So, so in other words, you don't believe that the, the Torah Shabbat Pei, the authoritative decision, was through Shechina. You just think it was logical, rational voting that was done like in a very uh, judicial manner. Is that is that how you feel? That's what it says. In other words, a group of guys get together and they just cast their vote. That's And, and, and of course the majority gets the agreement. That's what you hold to? That's what the Torah says in Parshat Shoftim. Okay, because in a way, I would have to disagree with that. But then you're in disagreeing the with the Torah. It says if an issue... Not really, because, huh? because where, did, where did the authority of the Sanhedrin, where did they get their samchut from in order to be established? Moshe Rabbeinu. From Moshe, and from Moshe, an aspect of Moshe's anointing was bestowed upon him, the same shechina that was on Moshe was then passed on to them. Their authority, part of Moshe's authority was passed on to Beit Din HaGadol. Yeah, but not some right. spiritual... I'm not saying this magic. in a metaphysical way. I'm not saying this like in a Kabbalistic way. Can Chazal make mistakes? Of course they can. Yeah, so what's this divine authority passed by Moshe that you disagree cannot make mistakes? Okay, in other words, when we read in David's words in Psalm 82, mm -hmm. it's even in the, in the Yochanan, Chen, there, the concept that the, the Sanhedrin are called by the singular plural name Elohim. Yes. And there, Nachmanides explains to us that the reason why they were identified with the, the, the attribute of judgment, the name of judgment, the name Elohim, is because when you went before the Sanhedrin, it was as if you were going before the Shekhinah. Not literally, okay. but in a figurative sense, because the Shekhinah dwelled in them, and that gave them the ability to interpret or so the Rambam on that pasuk says that the only reason they're called Elohim because Elohim is not the name of God or has anything to do with the Shekhinah, but it just means powerful ones. Exactly. And, okay, and that's Rambam, but what, I understand that powerful ones, but Nachmanides comes along. So what gives the Rambam the authoritative over, let's say, what Nachmanides has to say? Because Nachmanides was a Kabbalist and the Rambam wasn't. And he okay. Yeah. But who says? But who says that the Rambam... Is the final is the final say so at the end of the day? Because the Torah itself calls many things. Where's, where's Rabban Samkuda? Yeah, where, where's Wait, hold on. the Torah or Tanakh itself calls Yerushalayim Elohim? So right, right. Yeah. yeah, because it also, figuratively speaking, represents yeah, where the Shekhinah dwells. That it's yeah. where the Shekhinah dwells. I mean, in a sense, we're not saying literally here. 
The Rambam is a rationalist. He built his reason out of examples in Torah Shibik Tav. Not some sort of mystical encounter that the Ramban, but I may have had. Ah, but then a couple of minutes ago, you just said here that Ramban is actually more prosciutto than Rashi. Yeah. I mean, you clearly. Have it both ways. And you, he, he argues very prosciutto in his commentary. And you agreed. You agreed. In, the no. sense, in a sense, I understand his line I of did, reasoning for the, what the Ramban agree. is saying. I didn't. I didn't see you agree. I'm just saying. I understand no. what the well, Ramban is saying. This is right. Right. Say Ramban. Okay. Ibn Ezra is Peshat. Rashbam, the grandson of Rashi, is Peshat. The Ramban right. is more Peshat than Rashi, but I do not subscribe to the ideas of the Ramban, who himself was a Kabbalist. Right, because you reject the notion of... Uh, uh, of the, the the, well, he rejects the notion of the Sod. Eh? Yeah, okay. no, no, no. I go further than that. I reject the whole notion of Lurianic Kabbalah, or any Kabbalah deriving from the Sod. That's fine. That's not, that's not the thing. But I, I, coming back to it, even though Rambam, what he brings out to, in the end, a person can say, well, what the, or even though Rambam may be rationalistic, who says he's your final authority at the end of the day? I told you that this whole notion we're discussing about Mashiach is subjective. Every well, it's it's the the no, here. we're not just uh, talking about Mashiach. See, here. See, because that's the notion. Even though we use the baseline here to talk about Masaka Sanhedrin with the concept of Mashiach, for instance, even though, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, as you argue with Saki here about the notion of Agada, that Agada, of course, it should never replace the Bashad or even the Halakha. Even if we took a look at Rambam and Hilkot Malachim as he, as he brings down the requirements for the Mashiach, he's doing, he's doing Agada. He's doing a Hidu. Absolutely. Hidu. Absolutely. How, That's can't it's, accept it as Halakha. It's considered Halakha. Only because something appears in the Mishnah Torah as Halakha 1, Halakha 2 does not mean it's a Halakha. This is the principle you learn in Yeshiva on the first day. Okay, the right. Ambam says in Mishnah Torah, it's unhealthy to eat fruit. Do not eat fruit. Raw fruit. Is that a Halakha? It's advice. Right? right. We have to make a distinction. Halakha means that it's deciphering or he's bringing down some sort of law that was codified by the Beit Din Haggadol, by the Sanhedrin. That's Halakha. Anything about Mashiach is in the area of the subjective. Okay, three rabbis, 20 opinions. Right. Why can you then condemn me for not believing your interpretation when I accept you? When I accept you. Nobody condemn 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 you. I'm very happy to hear that you believe that someone who does not accept Yeshua is not condemned. When the new test is Okay. Usher, 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 wait, wait, wait. We have it on the Usher, this is my show. And I wanted to be respectful. And it was very respectful until this point. Nobody said anything about you in any way. So if you had other issue with Messianic believers, please don't take it. No, when I say me, I'm speaking for everyone who hasn't accepted Yeshua as a okay. Say. Okay, li li listen, okay. my issue is not, first of all, let me say, is not with you. Okay, I met you actually on a personal. This is not level. personal. No, the, the, I like my, you. My, 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 my issue is, is, with all due respect to you, and I do respect you. I was brought up in Judaism from a very little age, and I know that everybody who is truly following Orthodox Judaism know and yearn, not just for Mashiach to come, but for the Chidush that the Mashiach will come. Let me take throw something at you, because you said something a minute ago. I don't want to lose sight on this thing. You said that the words of the prophet somehow did not come to give us some, something completely new, but they are really coming to uh, uh, just, just basically reiterate what was already done, already said. In essence, I understand you correct. Bring us back to the Nothing new under the sun. You know, you know here's an example. I can give many, many examples, and we'll get to them in a minute. But, uh, you know, here's one thing. It says in, in, in Zechariah, Zechariah the prophet, chapter Chet, Chapter 8. He says, Ko Amar Hashem Tzavao. Not Ko Amar Zechariah. Ko Amar Hashem Tzavaot. Som Revi'i, Som Chamishi, the fourth fifth fast, the fifth fast, with Som Shvi'i, with Som Asiri, Yel Bet Yehuda, to the house of Judah. Le Sasson, Le Simcha, Le Joyce and Happiness, Le Moadim Tovim, Ahemet. Shalom Ahavu. Okay, Amen. look, if there is nothing change during, and, and let's not play again the game, this is the messianic, uh, uh, the death of Mashiach. This is obviously going to take place where Mashiach come, 
according to every Mefaresh, okay? According to every Mefaresh, they say. That's what they quote from Mashiach Ka. Obviously, they are inherent things that will change from what Mashiach Ka. What, 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 Chazal says, woe to the one who fasts during Tisha B'Av when Mashiach will be here. I mean, this is, this is the Psha. Oh this is the Psha of the This is not Agada. Hold on one second. These fasts, every one of these fasts, are rabbinic fasts. They're not Torah fasts. Rabbinic fasts, rabbinic laws will change when there's another Beit Din Do you agree with this? Som Shevi'i here is not Yom Kippur. It's the fast of Gedalia. Every one of these fasts that you just quoted are rabbinic fasts. And the halakha is that rabbinic laws will change if you have a oh, greater number. So greater oh, wait, wait a okay, second. Okay, so would you agree then, in a sense that, okay, <laughs> the Rabbanan still, does the Rabbanan still have authority today? For sure. Wait a second. I, I, I'm confused. Well, where's I, the... I, I'm confused. You tell me the Rabbanan have authority. Yes. In your in your website, it tells that you're the only Orthodox yeshiva in the world that do conversion. Do you do? No, 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 conver- no. Wait, wait. Do you do? Do you do conversion to Rabbanan? Of course, absolutely. Really? Yes. According according to Jewish halacha, oh. it's, this conversion is accepted in Israel. Only because something's not accepted, does that mean it's not done by halakha? Okay. No, that's the Rabbanan, my friend. You can't no. change the <laughs> The Rabbanan are the halachot that appear in Shas, not the words of the Lubavitcher Rebbe or the Rabbanut in Israel. You grew up Jewish, and you believe that the Rabbanut today is the same Sanhedrin that we had in the Divrei Sofrim in, in Talmud Bavli, in Talmud Yerushami? No. Okay, so the rabbi today is not the Rabbanan. The halakha is that we could only change a rabbinic law if a court of greater wisdom and greater number is gathered together. Now, we don't have a court now. Smicha disappeared. The Beit Din Hagadol ruled from on top of the Harabayat. Okay, that has not happened, but that does not mean that the rulings that they instituted could be abolished. They cannot be abolished till there's another court. Now, we believe if there's another Beit Din Hagadol, if there's another temple... The courts will change many rabbinic laws, which is this chapter you just quoted. The, 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 Asher, the problem, okay. the problem, just here, here, here's the issue. issue with what you're saying. Asher, you're making an artificial, artificial distinction between the Rabbanan and the, the Oraita. This is a distinction that you are making. When we're talking about Torah Hadasha. Okay, Torah Hadasha. I said the Rabbanan will definitely change during the days of Mashiach. No doubt. But there will be the Pnimiut and the Chidush also to the Torah the Oterita. It doesn't mean that the Torah the Oterita, you know, uh, 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 is thrown out of the window. Although Chazal, if we are to, you can look at Yerushalmi, in some places say, mitzvot it batlu, the sun mitzvot. There is a, there's a big so discussion in Judaism. Hold on. What, will be, what will be abolished? I mean, so. Why say anything that there's some sort of Torah of Mashiach and Torah of Moshe and there's some sort of distinction? I mean, it sounds like Leif Neighbor, like you're putting some huge stumbling block because now you're telling everyone, I didn't really say that the Torah was going to be abolished in any way, but just new ideas are going to be no, abolished. No, First of all, no, I, I, I said clearly that there will be a Chidush. In Zep- Absolutely there will be the Chidush. You because in Zechariah, all those fasts are rabbinic fasts? Of course. Okay. You know, so do you have a problem with rabbinic fasts being changed when there's another side entrance? It's, 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 it's much Wait. more than that. Okay. It's going to be much more than that. There's let's continue. Two. Let's, co- there's let's continue. Let's continue. Asher, Asher, let's continue for a moment. So because more than an hour. I mean, I have no problem. You know. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go a little bit longer because I think the key point that you say, the key, the key that you said is, look, it's going to be a teshuvah that is going to bring um, Mashiach. In essence, that's, that's what I understood from you. Okay? Now, I partially agree with also... The Torah. This is what the Torah says. Okay, let's turn again to, to the Navi. Okay, I mean, do you agree Navi. with this? Do you agree that this is well, the narrative laid down in the Torah? Well, yes. I, I, will t- I will tell you that in Yom Kippurim, the Yom Kippurim, the, it says, "Ve'anitem et nafshotechem." Okay, that's all what it says. It does not use the word the teshuva. Show me, please, in Leviticus 15 and 16, where there was a teshuva of the people. Aaron, the high priest, has taken upon himself 
the responsibility of the people. That's why it says in the Hebrew, and let's not twist the Hebrew. What does the Torah have to do with Yemot HaMashiach? Well, 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 it is. What? Because, because, because it's a prophetic picture of the things to come. What you're telling me. If you're a Messianic Jew, an Orthodox uh, Asher, Asher, Asher. Or has anything to do with Messiah? Asher, Asher, according to the Torah, Hashem says in Leviticus 15, the Leviticus 16, but in Achaimut, you are to do this. Every year. To, to Every this year. Program. Yes. And it says something interesting in the Hebrew. It says that the Aaron taking it to the Ashmat Ha'am. And the interesting thing about the word the Ashmat Ha'am is taking it upon himself. So please tell me. You're hopping into a if, different place. We move. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Like from the authentic Torah. If this is authentic Torah, let me ask you a question, Asher. Now you're trying to justify your show. Asher, Asher. Oh, I'm yeah, going to stick on one topic. I, 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 I no, no, I, I, Asher, you claim. To a different topic. No, no, Asher, Asher, it's just all part of a similar claim. The claim that I'm hearing from you is this. I'm going to recap this position if I understood it correctly. I have an authentic Torah today. I represent authentic Torah. Okay? I said nonsense. And the reason I say nonsense is because the original Torah, before Egel Azara, before the, gold, the golden calf is there, for a split second, it was the perfect Torah. But then the Klalot, the curses have come upon us. And we today, every Jew knows that, that we are not just living in the Barakot, we're living also according to the Klalot today. I believe the only one that can take the Klalot upon himself was the Kohen Kadol. That, that's Torah. I mean, we can I know you believe that. Yeah, but no, me, that's what Torah no, says. No, that's not what Torah says. The Torah it's doesn't say. It's Torah, absolutely it's what Torah says. Torah only got introduced because of the sin of the golden calf. The Tochacha is a conditional curse that if we fail to keep Torah, even if there was a golden calf or not, that we would be exiled. That this would happen to you if you fail to keep Torah. It doesn't have to happen. Okay? It doesn't have to happen because this... Okay, but, uh, but Asher, uh -huh. that even as, the, even as Nachmanides explains, the, the, the Tochacha in Bechuk has served as a form of Nebuah. Talk about Torah. That's, it, I, it served, listen, Nachmanides explains that as a form of Nebuah that did come to pass in the Gullah it's a bubble. In the Torah, it happened, and as we read Ezra and Nehemiah, Hashem said in Bechukatai, when you return from that, I will forgive the sins to your forefathers, but not you. And we see Nehemiah and Ezra confess the sins of the forefathers. And therefore, Nachmanides says that if they violate the conditions again, then there's an exile without an expiration date. How does this change the narrative of the Torah? Today. I mean, just answer me. How does this change the narrative of the Torah? Now, what if we take the narrative of the Torah and then apply the writings and the prophets to it and say, ah, now it makes sense. It's a just system. You would have to agree. It's a little unjust to expect some sort of celestial bailout when we failed to merit it. Do you agree with this? Do you agree that if the Torah is not a meritocracy or based off of a meritocracy, we do not want it, we do not accept it, because God is not just, and then God is not fair if this is the system that is really in play, the system that you guys are explaining? No, Hashem is just. The fact that Hashem, 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 Hashem didn't violate the covenant. Is he did. Shiach based on a meritocracy. Yes or no? We listen, no. we violate the covenant. No. That means, that's when Hashem walked away and he says, I'm going to send a Malach ahead of you. And Moshe pleaded, don't send your, don't go away without the Shekhinah. In other words, we need Shekhinah. So Hashem says, I don't know what that has to do with my question. Okay. Is Asher, 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 you're going to have to let me finish. No, what I'm trying to say here is that we have curses added in the Torah. And it, no the condition is this. Okay. All the Judaism today, Jewish people around the world, are they under a curse, yes or no? For sure. Absolutely. Huh? Okay, so, so why do you want to bring the people to this? So here's the thing. So if you're going to have to look for Gerim, the Ger that comes in, you bring them right under a curse. That's, that's, why, Paul, exactly that's why Paul has the argument. Issue. That's relations. the exact issue. And by the way... That's the reason that's we're in Galut. The reason we're in Galut... Wait, wait, wait. No, go ahead, Ashley. Say it again. The reason we're in Galut is to physically be a light into the world, to bring that Geula. The more people keeping Torah, whether you're born Jewish or you convert to Judaism, this is what's going to bring a redemption based off of a form of meritocracy. If Yom HaMashiach is not something we earn, it's unethical. If it's something that just comes out of the sky, like rain, then it's unethical and it's anti the words of the Torah. Because this is not the way the Torah lays it out. This is okay. So let me let me ask you this. Even though we can disagree here with the Mifarshim on the on the on the pasukim there in Nitzavim, 
when it talks about returning from the exile, by the way, okay, go ahead. Returning with the returning from the exile, and and different mafarshim say that oh, the the circumcision of the heart that's done through Mashiach. Let me ask you a question: Why would they actually come to the conclusion that it has to be through a savior or Mashiach, etc.? Why would they? Why would they? Like like Nachmanides, for example. Let's take Nachmanides. I I I I would like to put that. I would let him answer. I ask the question. Okay, okay. We have to say. I want to give one more. Wait, let him answer that question. I want to just ask. Why would they have to reason like like someone like Nachmanides, for an example? Why would he say that this is only done through Mashiach to end the Gullahs that we're in today? There's a lot of things I disagree with the words of the Ramban, and it's not just this. And I don't even have to disagree. I could just hold by the Ramban. But even like Ram Kahl, Ram Kahl, same thing. I mean, same thing. He comments about the Mashiach as well. What would make them actually say that we would need the Mashiach to do that if we have such a perfect Torah then? You're explaining to me why is the Ram Kahl wrong? No, I'm not saying the Ram Kahl. I'm asking you why. What makes them, when they read Parson and Savim, and they say, oh, to end that exile, the like Shia defeated. Hey, you know, perhaps, I mean, he was a closet Christian. According to the rational, okay, Peshat, not, not sure. according to the rational, Peshat Orient and Mephorshim, the Ibn Ezra, the portions of the Rambam, supposedly the Rambam, I mean, had a parish or Torah that disappeared. But the little scratch we have to it, he explains it the way I'm explaining it. The way it's laid down in Scripture, that Teshuvah has to be the prerequisite for everything, or God is not just. If we need some Messiah to guide us to the Geula, according to Hilchot Malachim, he's not Mashiach. Till he actually gets us to repent, then he is Mashiach. But you can't say that it's Mashiach that's the end goal. No, the end goal is peace. And the reward for that peace, the icing on top, is the notion that we have Ben David. That's a, I, I don't disagree with that. But my question, my question was just saying here that when it comes to Shuvah, I'm not denying that the Torah says Shuvah. Definitely it says Shuvah. But in some of the guys in the Mepharshim, they have the Mashiach there to indicate that there's possibly something wrong with the human that he's not able to make a full Shuvah. I agree. There's an opinion that right? holds that way. And I also agree there are many other opinions that hold different ways. You know, so what are you really asking me here? So what I'm saying I here is that... I don't know why they don't agree. But why, the point is, why do Christians... My point is that if Shuvah alone could do the job, then we're doing a horrible job at it. I agree. I come. Okay? And the Torah alone is not able to help us. Because you know why Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov did not have the Torah. Did you just hear what I, you just said that the Torah alone cannot help us to do Teshuvah. Right? Where was Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov's Torah, Asher? What's your point? According to the Peshat, according to the Peshat, where What's was their Torah? Well, this is, I think I mean, it's a pretty simple question. Where was their Torah at? And no, 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 we're not going to bring in any of God or anything that the Torah, they had the Torah already. We can argue that. They were technically uh -huh. going by, uh -huh. by definition of Halakot. Uh -huh. They were not Jews, technically, if we want to argue that way. Let's not dance around this question. So why, the where question, was their Torah at? I don't think that Shuvinu or Yitzhak had the Torah of Moshe. Torah itself just means instructions. Did Abraham exactly. listen to the Torah of Hashem? Yes, he listened to the instructions of Hashem. But Abraham Avinu did not see from Geula, he did not see Yemot HaMashiach. So what's your question? Okay, so my point is, they didn't have the Torah that we need, so obviously what was doing the work for them without the actual Torah that we're using here as a vehicle to get the job done? What work? We're already on such Abraham a higher Madrega than us. Torah. Abraham Avinu did not bring the world to Torah. That's our job. The Torah did not exist. The Torah of Moshe did they not... They brought closer to Hashem, as it says in Parashat Zlachlachah, they made souls. For sure. In Haran, what does that have to do with bringing the Geulah? Well, obviously, he did a better job at it than what we do at it. And if we're going to go back to that original format... I don't know. I mean, all the Mephorshim teach that all the souls he brought back actually left. No, no, what, the, uh, wait, okay. We, but wait, let's say we throw out Mephorshim. We're just sticking to Peshat here. <laughs> see if we can reverse the tables. All right. Yeah, so according to Peshat, it doesn't say that he converted anyone to Torah, but he made souls in Haran. So that's the Peshat. Was that good enough? Uh, no, okay. it doesn't. The Hebrew doesn't say that I had to tell you that. It says that he made souls in... Okay. Uh, that's not what he says. But I guess the point is here is that Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov's relationship with Hashem was on a much higher madrega. Okay? They didn't have a Torah given. And if we, if, we, if we look at Paul's argument in Galatians, Paul says... Well, the only reason why the Torah was given, um, uh, the Matan Torah, was because of the increase of sins in Israel. They deviated from the path of their forefathers. I don't fathers. know, Paul. I mean, well, that's, 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 whatever you want. that's what I'm saying. If I'm bringing in another rabbinic opinion here, like Paul, even in my second shop is 88 a. Hashem held the mountain over their head, of course, in a metaphorical way, to force them to accept it. Because why? He had to tamper with the free will because they went off the Derek when they lived in Mitzrayim. They weren't doing the same thing as their forefathers. So why, why, in a way, it's like almost Hashem brought the Torah down as a way to force them as a slave mentality because they were not at the same level as their forefathers. That's definitely one opinion.
the notion that Hashem held the mountain over the head, as Rashi brings down. There's other opinions of that completely <laughs> overrides yeah, yeah. free will. That Hashem even tells him in Parshat Re'eh to choose Torah, to choose life. Now, why would he be telling him to choose life over death if he has a mountain hanging over his head? You know, yeah, this is this is the second Torah. This is what after the, 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 the covenant is root 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 with the Torah. curses. With, it's the, with the curses added, Asher. And so, in other words, he's giving them an option. Listen, so you're right? telling me whether well, before the Luchot were broken, well, there was no consequences for breaking the mitzvot? There was, they're not in the Peshat. We don't read about it. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, it's... it's go, go back to Parshat. It's, 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 it's the Look, look, Asher, Asher, Asher. Here's the issue I'm having. You are arguing with an unequal equal weight and measures because you said that you want to stick to the Peshat. Yes. You said basically, let's throw away all of Chazal, and I, I'm confused by that period. You know, is it? I never said throw uh, all of Chazal. Uh, well, 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 Chazal is to the Agadah. The Agadah is to bring halacha. That's the only job of Chazal. That many of them have personal stories that could be very lovely. In the vast majority of instances, actually contradict themselves. But I never said toss out Chazal. Toss out the Agadic element of Chazal. Correct? In other words, it's is not that better? It's not accepted as halakha, just the halakha or it's Okay, yeah, right. We already agreed that there is not codified halakha on Mashiach. Every Jew in the world will tell you that halachot melachim is not halakha on Mashiach. I agree. Sorry. I agree. Okay, I agree. all right. So let, let's go. I, I, I want to get back here for a moment for the point on teshuva. Okay, Yechezkel made a very strong point, I believe, that the first Torah did not have curses in it. But let's take this up. Wait, wait, wait. A step. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The first Torah that wasn't contained in the Luchot, but the Luchot didn't contain all the Torah, okay? The Torah is contained throughout all of Torah, Shibik Tav. No, I, 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 we're talking about Mount Sinai. So Sinai. only because he brought... We're talking about the Torah, but the Egel Azav. Okay. We're talking about the Egel Azav. Let's not get, get to details to this thing. Let's go for some it's other funny things. funny to me because you said the first Torah was broken. The first Torah was not broken. The first set of books were broken. The first set of books were broken. Okay, well, okay. It, it, it's just semantics here. Semantics. In other words, the, 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 when the covenant was first... Let, 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 was. Let's go to another place. Let, <laughs> let, let's go quickly to Zechariah because we're running truly short in time. Let's go to Zechariah 12 for a moment. It says there in the Torah... And this is, again, this is the Nevi, Nevi'im, okay? This is the Nevi'im. And it says, we, we, we'll, start, we'll start in uh, verse 8, okay? <laughs> it says, Bayomahu, and I think we all can agree when it says Bayomahu, it's talking about the day of Mashiach, okay? When Mashiach comes. Yagen Hashem, Be'ad Yoshev Yerushalayim. He will defend the inhabitants of Yerushalayim. Ve'aya anichshal ba'em, okay, ba'yom ahu ki David, u'vet David keloim, kemalach Hashem lifnehem. The angel of the Lord will appear in front of them. Ve'aya ba'yom ahu, verse 9, e'vakesh la'ashvid, he will destroy et kol ha'goyim. He will want to destroy all the, all the nations come against Abayim al Yerushalayim, come in Yerushalayim, okay? And then he says there, ve'shafachti Al Beit David, the Al Yoshev Yerushalayim. Listen, there is no teshuva here in this verse yet. Shafachti, the word shficha in Hebrew means to pour in abundance, as you know, that's just a pshat. Ruach chen v'tachnuni. V'ibitu elai, and they will look upon me, et asher dakru. Let me ask you a question. When, as Jews, do we do an hesped over somebody? What, what is a mes- misped in so Judaism? Right. Right. What? Doing a funeral. It's a eulogy. That's right. It's eulogy. Right. The word hesped is eulogy here. Mm-hmm. Okay? He's saying here... The text, this is the Pshat. He says that they're doing eulogy. This is the Pshat but, uh, of the Nub. You want to, okay. Wait, you want to stick with the Pshat? No, no the Pshat is, of the Torah, this is hyperbole. No. This is a conditional promise at that time. Conditional? Which was, prove it to me that it's conditional. Uh, I'll prove it by the simple fact that all the Nevi'im disagree on these instances on how supposedly Mashiach will appear because he was speaking to a time when Israel was either surrounded by a nation or living in a land in peace but ready to go into Galut because they're worshipping idols, or Hashem coming in the clouds, or Hashem, Mashiach coming in the clouds to judge Israel because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's the, not... The Gerah will, okay. will flat out disagree with you. The Gerah would actually answer this this way. He said there are two phases of Geula. 
there are two faces of redemption. I just explained. Both, right. face, the, both faces have to, to come through no. because the prophet is true. No. It's, it's not it's, either or or. It's our truth. Wait a second. Wait, wait a second. Here's the problem I have with, with what you just said. You tell me a minute ago, listen, this is, this is absolutely ridiculous. A minute ago, you told me that uh, Haggadah, okay, Haggadah, in, in, like let's say in the Talmud, mm. should not be considered halacha. You just quoted to me Sanhedrin 98. If they are meritists, they will receive Mashiach, Ben David. Responding to they, okay. it, well, but, but you can't have it. Asher, if you're saying in one way it's a gada, why are you using it to base your argument upon? No, because you started your argument saying that all the prophets prophesied for Mashiach, and that's not what I did. No, no, no. I, I'm reading to you here the pshat. Okay. You just violated your own principle, Asher. I did the not. Pshat, the pshat here does not say if or maybe or if Israel will be married. I'm saying stay to the pshat. The pshat of the Torah. Look, look, look. The, the, the pshat. The, 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 this is being recorded. I said the prophets speak in hyperbole, and the prophecies or the statements that appear in the words of the prophets regarding Mashiach are not really considered prophecies because so, 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 you, be, so you believe what place of the people hearing these words. In so, other words, so you believe what Rambam said in essence, just to clarify your point. You, Rambam said that all all the word of prophets is truly the prophets that are mashal vechida. They are parables and they are riddles to us. We really cannot understand them. That's what you are telling me. Correct? Like that with Agadot and oh, the words of wait, the we don't Wait know. a second. So we should take every Mefarshen from the first century all the way to Rambam who says this speak of Mashiach in one voice and we need to throw it out? No. I'm saying that the words of the prophets here, they're conditional to the ears that are hearing this prophecy. In other words, Israel is either being surrounded, like in Sefer Yeshayahu, or is about to go into Galut, like in Sefer Yermiyahu. It's speaking about different instances with someone named the Anointed One of Israel, or the Son of David. It doesn't mean that all these have to be lumped together and be fulfilled by oh, what the Christianity is doing. The job, again, of this. these words of the prophets is to remind us of Torah, not to give us some sort of rewriting of the Yamat HaMashiach that appears in Torah Shabbat. That's my point. And you're failing to me. You're posing the same question in different ways and trying to get me to tell you what you want to hear. I can change my stance here. The Pashat of Torah is what we go by. And the Pashat of Torah says, the Pashat of Torah says that it is Teshuvah that that's brings not, that's, the Geot that's, that's, that's not what the text here said. It actually says that they did a Leviathan. I'm saying the Torah. But, but I ask you, Asher, Asher, let's stay with the Pashat. The Pashat here said, this subdue, the, the word has, the oh, Asher, Asher, no, the word has sped, has sped, no, has sped no, and teshuvah, Asher, has sped and teshuvah are not the same are, principle. Are, it's basic Hebrew 101. Prophet. Teshuvah prophet. is to return and to repent. Has sped, you eulogize when you are sad or you see somebody who is dead or something like that. Let's not mix the concepts. Okay, but wait, but wait. If we go back to Asher, Asher's argument is that in context, I, I know argument. in context, it, it, but it sounds like you guys are two different channels. What he's saying is that he knows what the Nav Navi is saying. The, the Navi is, is conditional to the time he spoke it in relation to the background information that was there. And he's saying that we shouldn't lump every form of the, every, every passage that refers to Mashiach together. But we're looking at a specific passage. That's my point. Asher, am, I, am, I, am, I, am I getting that right from you? Is that what you're, that's what you're getting at, correct? That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, I understand okay. what he's getting, but I'm saying I'm looking at a, a passage, a specific passage, okay? But, we don't have time to do a I know, but what he's saying, though, he's saying that understand. even though you're bringing that passage up, he's saying that it's, it's only relevant to the time that it was mentioned in. Now, the only thing, I would, it, the only thing I would have to say is this, is like even though the hyperbole, Call Mara Donai. If a prophet adds more than what he was told to add, then he's a Nabi Shaker. Would you, I mean, could we I say agree. that? I agree. Okay. So, so. Then, well, how can we say that they are, <laughs> they're embellishing a little bit here <laughs> on what he's saying, and we can just discontinue the, the, the Nabi'im? Yeah. Let's because, I think, because I think you're misinterpreting the purpose of the books of the prophets. It's not for us to build prophecy nowadays. It's to give us a historical context of the people and the times that these prophets were speaking to. In other so words, so that, that I disagree. You, you were saying that all the Nebuchadnezzar is giving only for the people who live in You want me to give you a history? Only this age and this era. You, in essence, tossed every 
by, by the method that you just described, you have taken, you, you have taken a little history about the books of the prophets. But please, no, we don't need just, lectures of just, history. No, because this is going to clear up everything, okay? okay but please, right. let me finish, okay? Right, the reason we have the books of the prophets that were compiled, not as canonical, but just into scroll form by who? By the Anshe Knesset HaGedola, right? With the court, the first court, right? They decided to do this to give us a historical account, like I said, of the life and world of the prophets that, again, they were titled after. And second, to show us and teach us an illustrated view on the consequences and rewards that what that were mentioned originally in the Torah. In other words, that the Torah is true. However, however, although these scrolls existed, hardly no one owned a copy of them. Because, as you know, books and scrolls at that time were scarce. And even all the way to before the printing press, people had to memorize prayers because personal books on prayer did not exist, right? Or translations because they had to be done by hand did not exist. Now, what they're always... Always a lot of were Sifrei Torah, books of the five books of Moshe, mainly because the Torah itself commanded what? It commanded Jews to write their own Sefer Torah, so every family owned many, many copies of the Torah. Actually, you see that we have halachot on how to write a Sefer Torah, but we don't have halachot on how to write or copy the books of the prophets, with the exception of Megillat Asher, but that's another story. So, it wasn't until the Tobayids... The Tobias, the Hellenized Jews under the Syrian Greeks that outlawed the study of Torah and Eretz Israel, that the law became that we should study a portion of the prophets that dealt with that Torah portion, what we call the Haftarah. Now, if you notice, only after this period that Gnosticism, mysticism, it ran rampant throughout Israel. The birth of the Essenes, the Sadducees, had even Christianity. But regardless, the point is that the job of the prophet and us having their books was for us to know their history and how they brought Israel back to Torah, not to build a new religion or crazy ideas on. That is my point, and this is what exactly what you're doing. You're saying that the prophet, as described in the Rambam's principle, is whatever happens to appear in the books of the prophet, and not just a prophet that Hashem sends us for a specific time and place to guide us as some sort of human ethical compass. You understand? Because no one no, 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 okay, okay. okay. no in charge oh, sure, of oh, sure. writing books of the prophets. Go ahead. Okay, so with, no, so with that said, would you agree that there's any pasukum within the Nevi'im that do speak of a future time? Would you, like for instance, Zachariah, we include it in the end of the Eleno prayer, which recalls the fact that all the earth is going to be one, and Hashem's name will be one. That's a, obviously a foretelling there. The universal recognition of the true living God. Would you accept that as something as truth? I accept it because it says that in the Torah. Okay, right. In, in other words, well, in other words, God's going to be all with the Gentiles. I mean, and, or is it going to be one with Israel? I mean, the Torah says that the nations will look at the Jews, and because of the Hukim, we do not the Mishpatim, the unexplainable mitzvah. Just because of the Hukim, the nations are going to be in awe and say, "What a wise and understanding people!" This is what you're referring to. And it's sense in a way but also it's like Zachary is looking at the future time I mean all the creation becomes one with Hashem I mean I've heard of course other radical commentaries on it otherwhere from Jewish uh, Gentiles worshipping Jews based on those Pesukim there I mean not worshipping God but in a sense being slaves to the Jews in the Messiah well actually if you want and, to go to, to the Pshat that's what the Pshat says I, in, uh, in Isaiah in Isaiah but in other words I mean that's this, like, like I mean Eved really in that concept. Servants, right? Servants, Servants in the okay. sense. I yeah. mean, if we consider the fact that the Yovel is reinstated, then you have the Gerito Shafin, which in Bibal is an Evid, in that sense. But in other words, how can creation, I mean, I guess it depends. I'm just asking here, do you consider some Pasukim in the Nevi'im uh, that they could still be binding up for future events? When they're future amplifying events. the words of Torah, yes. When they're amplifying the words of Torah, yes. Okay. 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 That's, that's okay. I, I think just for sake of time, here's what we're going to do, Okay. We heard two very radical point of views, and very, very different, or obviously very different. We're going to take, um, let's see, I'm going to give uh, five minutes kind of a conclusion, okay? For, uh, Asher, we'll start with you, and we'll, 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 uh, we'll have the uh, conclusion as well. So, Asher, uh, just whatever is on your heart at the end of this conclusion, go right ahead. First, I want to start off that I really care for you. I know that you love the God of Israel. So what I have to say, please do not take this the wrong way. But I really think you guys are 
Messiah junkies. By the simple fact that you have stated that you follow the Torah of, of Mashiach, that you have departed from the Torah of Moshe. And this message is really not just for you, but for everyone listening, that you guys have forgotten about HaKodesh Baruch Hu, that you have forgotten about your first love. And I'm just crying out for you guys to return to Torah. And I want to tell everyone hearing my voice tonight that the Almighty, He loves you, and He sees the potential in all of you in becoming a partner with Him in bettering this world through His instructions contained in the Torah. And do not, do not believe anyone if they tell you that love and mercy came through Yeshua. Hashem has always been there and is the one, like the Psalmist says, who sticks closer than a brother. And that's all I have to say. Anything that I may have said that offended you, I apologize. And I accept you like a brother. You want to say a word? Yeah. Uh, in, 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 in uh, closing here, I want to thank uh, Rabbi Meza for taking this time out to have a dialogue. And I would just like to say that um, uh, being a Mashiach junkie, first I am in love with Hashem. <laughs> okay, I mean, I love Hashem. I mean, clearly, the mitzvot I keep are centered upon Torah, Torah Moshe. I mean, whether from kosher to observing Shabbos to Nida, family purity, whatever the case may be. In other words, I find grounds that the Torah is a guideline or a ruler, but I also recognize that in a sense that the Torah that we have today, even though Hashem gave it to us, that wasn't the intended goal to why he gave us the Torah. I believe in returning back to a faith like Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, that our relationship is not, even as foretold by Jeremiah, it's not based upon another man knowing Hashem. It was based upon coming into complete union with Hashem. And I recognize that's done through the Mashiach, if you will, who eliminates the curse of the Torah to bring us back to one without curses. And so my desire to see, of course, all Claude Israel is that come out of exile, not in a proselytized type of way, in other words, through some type of uh, mis uh, manipulation of, of the Besorot at all, but in a full revelation of understanding Hashem's desire for Claude Israel to come back to him in full redemption in my opinion, through the Mashiach. And so that's all I have to share here today. I, I, you know, I desire to see more conversations like this happen so we can learn to get to know each other more and ultimately see Hashem's uh, miraculous hand of intervention work through us and for the entire world. Thank you. I would like to thank, first of all, both of you for taking time and being a uh, guest here at our humble studio throughout this thing. I guess I would like to say that Perhaps my, my perspective is, is very similar yet very different than you, Asher. To somebody that uh, was raised really in normative Judaism, I recognize how much we truly, truly need Mashiach. I cannot talk for anybody else, but I can speak to me as, as personally. And I think it's recap, my position is recapped in this verse in Devarim, chapter 30. Umal. Adonai Eloecha, et levav cha, ve'et levav zarecha, ve'et Adonai Eloech v'chol levav cha. The circumcised heart is the goal of the Torah, and the issue is not with the Torah. The whole Torah, as Shaul says, is perfect, and is holy in its original state. The problem never was with the Torah. The problem is with human nature. This is the reason that even when Mashiach will come, as it said in Cheskel, he will institute some sacrifices that are not even recorded in the Torah. He will teach us this Torah, and he will renew this Torah. And I'm looking forward to this day, where all of Israel indeed will be outside of the exile. And perhaps this is a little akitza, as a word to think about. Maybe for you, especially Asher. Maybe, just maybe, Ramchal was right when he says that the Mashiach is also today in the Gola suffering for the sins of all of Israel, even today in the Gola. I thank you, Asher. I thank you, Rav Echesko. We wish blessing upon you, and uh, I'm sure we'll have opportunity to do it again. So God bless you. And everybody who watch, I hope you've been blessed and you've been edified. And I hope uh, you will consider all of your, what you have heard here today. Litraot kol tuv, and as we say in Hebrew, shavuatov. Litraot, and thank you.